Hello there and welcome to my little arty corner here on YouTube. I'm Angela, Angela Porter and I love to draw, I love to create art, I love trying new things out, I love sharing techniques and my thought process if I have any thoughts. I particularly like kind of abstract intuitive art but also patterns and motifs and stylized art and I draw inspiration from all kinds of places. If something grabs my attention eventually it may get used, hopefully it'll end up in a sketchbook or a photograph for reference later on. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me. If you've subscribed already, thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed yet and you like what I'm doing, please consider doing so. Um, it really does help the channel grow, honestly. Get what I'm doing out to other people who may like this. So it'd be very, very much appreciated. Okay, so what you can see in front of me here are two pieces of this kind of abstract, sort of neurographic art inspired, um, you know, drawings, I suppose, but they're not strictly neurographic in the sense of I haven't followed that process. But I do know in the past I've drawn stuff like this. It didn't have a label to it, it was just labelled abstract art. Um, I quite find it soothing and cathartic to just create lines. But what I find is helpful for this, as I showed in my previous video, which I will try to remember to link in the description below, that I find it useful to start with a coloured background and then use how those colours have created shapes and gradients and so on to inform where I'm going to put the lines and the kinds of pattern I'm going to do. This is the one I did in yesterday's video. Let me put that to one side for a moment. I, didn't, I haven't done any more to that because I said I'd let you suggest whether you'd like to see more and I'm going to show you a little bit more today and this is where I've tried some things out. So this is one that I created yesterday just for fun. Yesterday afternoon. Different colour scheme. I used pinks and yellows and um, oranges, orangey reds here. And um, colours are much lighter than this, perhaps because I just didn't put as much of the ink on, but that, I'm fine with that to be honest. But where you can see the darker colours, it's where I've added coloured pencil with um, an odourless uh, mineral solvent, mineral spirit, called Gamsol. And I use that with a tortillon or a paper stump, and the liquid will blend coloured pencil beautifully. Um, my only mistake with this is that I did do this last night while sat in bed, just settling down to go to sleep. And... Um, the light wasn't very good, so I've most probably added colours that are too vibrant for the background, but I'm going to continue to work on it on my own time. I have got white here and in other places, and this was the, um, I've got two pigment, white pigment gel pens. Um, and these are sort of like water resistant or waterproof when they're dried. They've got pigment ink in them, so they're much more opaque than the Sakura jelly rolls or... Um, the uniball, the ordinary uniball. This is a uniball hybrid gel DX. DX stands for document safe sort of thing. So it's it is designed to be sort of like archival almost. Um, and they've got a pilot shoes, and um, the pilot shoes is a much finer point, but the ink isn't quite as white as this, and um, I like that. So I've got those, and. Um, but I've also added, and if I tilt this, you may be able to see, I've been using a dip pen to add some gold ink in places. Unfortunately, I think the nibs for my dip pens I'm going to have to put into boiling water because they're coated with something and the ink just won't flow from them. I don't think it's got anything to do with the fact I used Gamsol and Pencil on those. did work better here in this section. In fact, I, quite, I really like this with the gold lines just inside those little black bits. So let me try and get you so you can see the gold. Yeah, it's not going to happen because you know you can see the shapes there, but it really does have that lovely shimmer. So um, it works nicely. So I may have to use a brush if I decide to add that. You can see how white the white is there as well compared. So really nice. Um, not my usual choice of colours, but an interesting choice all the same. Okay, let's put that to one side. So I'm going to add some shading and um, intensifying colours here on this before I do any more drawing. One thing I have noticed is the Documenta Sync 
can be moved with a Gamsol. The, that's the spirits I'm going to use to blend coloured pencils out. Um, so I've got to be very much aware of that as I add this. Okay. And if you choose to do the same, I now know I need to work with something like the Unipins or um, Microns or similar pens, the pigment pens, to um, use Gamsol with. You know, it is what it is. It's all part of learning. So the coloured pencils I've got, these happen to be the Derwent Chroma Flow. So I've got um, um, I've got a couple of blues or blue colours. I've got light blue, lapis blue and violet blue. I've also got violet and I've got two pinky colours. I've got orchid and I've got um, ultra pink. And I think these will, these seem to match in quite well here. So I want to add some extra colour to some of these to add some shading. Now, if I use just a light covering of colour to blend out, it's quite wonderful how the texture underneath will continue to show through, believe it or not. It really does. I'll tell you what, it might help if I put the, the lamp on a bit here. So I'm adding some... This is the violet, just around there. I'm going to add some more just around the edge. I'm going to leave some of this area in the middle without coloured pencil on because the Gamsol will let me blend things in. Oh, I didn't clean that tortillon off. OK, so I'm just going to use this. On this, there's a little foam pad on the top and you just touch the tip of your tortillon or paper stamp to it or you can use a paintbrush if you wish. Um, I'm not quite sure how it will affect paintbrushes so I'm not happy to use my favourite paintbrushes with it. But um, I'm just gently rubbing the coloured pencil and it blends the colours together beautifully but it will also move the colours a little distance away. So I can blend that down into the uncoloured area and get soft edges to those shadows. So it's just added that slight, slightly more intense colour there. I'll do the same here. I'm going to put the violet down here. And I'm going to go around the bottom. Now you might notice there's a lighter area there. Perhaps if I zoom in, how about that? You see there's a lighter water spot underneath here. I do believe we will continue to see that once I've blended this out, because the Gamsol will not affect the Distress Inks because it's not water and they are water-based. This is um, the, the Ultra Pink and this one then is Orchid. So I'm just using the Orchid as a paler colour just to help it blend through. So let's go back with the, the Gamsol. A little bit of Gamsol on your Tortillon goes an awful long way. Now, of course, you could choose anything to do this with. If you've used something that's water reactive underneath, this is a nice way of adding it. If you want to keep any texture you've got in it, but you can always go back and use more. So if I'd um, used ink tense pencils, I could go back with the ink tense and add more once they dried. But that's because they don't shift. Um, whereas the distress ink will now lose all of these lovely water spots. And you can see how this is adding some kind of dimension to this. I do like that. So it's really quite easy to do, quick and easy. And can you see, you can still see the texture that's underneath it, it's still showing through. Because I'm not trying to cover it up, I'm just adding enough of the coloured pencil that I've got the pigment there to blend out, to add that colour, but not so much that it's going to obscure what's underneath. Of course, the chroma flows are highly pigmented. They are artist, you know, professional artist quality pencils. So they aren't cheap, but they'll work with any coloured pencils. It's just these are what I have. And I've got Derwent Colour Soft, which I could have dug out of as well. Um, they're the pencils I prefer. Now this one here, it's, it's still a bit on the purpley side. So I'm going to put some of the violet blue down at the bottom. But I'm going to add a little bit of the pinky colour with it so they will blend together. And I do like to do each section one at a time and blend it out as I go. That way. Oh, I've picked up the wrong one. It's got orange on it. 
you've got to clean, if you're using different colour families, you really do need to clean the tortillons off or um, use them. But, you know, it is what it is. It becomes part of the design now. I'll use a little bit more of this here. Yeah, that's a bit better. Use the Gamsol in a, in a ventilated room. And yes, I've got tea, so excuse me, I'll have a drink. I've already done some adulting today. Only one bit of adulting, but I've done some adulting, so I'm quite chuffed with myself. Um, serious bit of adulting is needed very soon because I need to get, I really do need to get my backside of my head into gear and get myself a washing machine. And I will. Okay, this is violet blue, and I'm going to add that here with the violet, so I'm adding some more bluey tones into this area. And I will add the mid-toned blue as well, just to add a bit of variation here. And I'm going to leave the end pretty much the colour that it was. Now, because I've changed colour families, I'm going to change to a paper stump. Again, I'm just moistening the tip of it with Gamsol. And I'm just going to blend this out. So I've got two, two of these so I can work with different colour families. And it's amazing how a little bit of the um, Gamsol goes a long way and so does the coloured pencil. So fret not, whatever coloured pencils you have, this will work with. Wax based or what's the other kind? Um, oil based works. there you can see how I've got that. Now I may want to come in and add a bit more darkness in places. I'm going to do that even though the paper's a little bit damp with the Gamsol because it's not going to damage my coloured pencils particularly. It'll evaporate and leave them just as they are. And then I can intensify the colour here and blend it out that little bit. So I've been to taking a load of clothes washing to the laundrette. Um, today is not the day for me to go looking at washing machines. Um, that's one day next week, I think, will be the case. And um, I'm fine with that as well, because it will get done. Uh, but my head isn't in the right place today, and I can end up making disastrous choices or get talked into something I don't particularly you know, want or that's more expensive than I'm prepared for, as it were. So... I need to be in that clear frame of mind. You must think that I'm absolutely, well, I, I can, really, really, really can have an awful lot of trouble doing this adulting thing. I've always been the same and um, I can avoid it until it's exactly the right time and then suddenly I just go and do it. I don't think about it. I don't work myself up into a frenzy. I just suddenly find myself where I need to be and then I go, right, okay, today's the day for that. So you can see these sections, the difference it's made. Now, you could argue that, yes, I could have just drawn this pattern on white paper and added the colour afterwards, but I'm not going to add colour to every section. I'm going to pick and choose which sections I want to bring out and which ones I'm going to leave with just the background showing through. And I may end up doing most of it but I'm trying to think where this would work the best. Now, I'm going to go off over here to do some of these blues. And I think I'm just going to add some of the lightest blue there. And where's my violet blue? That's violet. Where have I put my violet blue? There. No, that's violet. Lapis blue. There's violet blue. And just a little bit of the violet blue here. And I'll blend those together. Now, because I'm using blue and purple, I'm just going to use the same end here of this. You can see how it gets stained. And the best thing to clean this up is um, sandpaper, emery boards. I've got boards that have got sandpaper attached to them, little boards that can come with the tortillons and paper stumps I've bought. They all work. Or a nail file, you know, the sandpaper ones would work wonderfully. So I've got that there, which makes that space a bit more interesting. And I've got another shape there that I can add a line to. 
This one is quite violety, so we'll go for violet blue. Just to add some shade. So I'm adding shade in a similar way as I would if I was using, say, graphite or a pit artist pen, which you could do this with if the colours match, because not everybody will work with distress inks. Um, and that's fine, it's whatever you've got in your stash. If you've done, as I've said already, if you've done watercolour, you can easily um, add more intensity on top of your watercolour with watercolour. Just don't overwork it in case you shift what's underneath. That is lovely there where I've got that light blue. And so I'm going to add some lighter blue here. But at the top, I'm going to add some lapis blue to get a darker toned blue in here. I'm going to leave the middle kind of its original colour. Like so. Now these lovely bits here really, really, really are begging for some shards of shade. So I'm going to put the shade right at the base of these. And fingers crossed, I can manage to work into these little spaces. I'm also going to put some down at the bottom. This is violet. Right on the edge. You have to remember the next time I do this to cut a piece of paper bigger than I need. And put masking tape around the edge if I'm going to do watercolouring. So I'm trying to use just the tip of this paper stump to get the coloured pencil to shift. Ooh, that's very tiny there, but manage. Uh, it's just very subtle, but it works. If I want more intensity, I can always go back and add a bit more pencil. This is the bit at the bottom. Ooh, wrong colour. No problem. They'll mix. You'll barely notice the difference, hopefully. There is a bit of difference in colour, so I could go back and use that colour in all of these sections. So that just gives that lovely kind of, it's got that feeling of it curving now. And I must admit, it could do with some more intensity. Here I'm going to use ultra pink on this section because it's more pinky. It's a longer section, but it's fine. It'll work. Same top and bottom and try and keep the middle without any of this, these colours spread into it so we've got a lighter area. The other way to do this if you don't have blending solution is you can get blending pencils and lots of different brands do them. And I have some from Derwent, Caran d'Ache, um, Prismacolor, and there's, you know, Caran d'Ache do a couple of different kinds, or the same blending medium but in different styles. You can get um, pencils that are all of their, the, the inner part of the pencil, so a woodless blending pencil, which is actually really good value for money. You get a lot more of that, or you can get a um, so sort of like ones that have got wood around the outside and as well as one that is solid. But just that has created that lovely kind of feeling. Now I know the background here is um, purpley, but I want a different colour here and I want it quite dark because I want it to feel that we're looking through into something. So I'm adding plenty at the top and lots at the bottom, but I'm going to try to keep the middle bit a bit more open and perhaps a bit of a highlight there, we'll see. So I've used the lapis blue here. I think one day I might extend my collection of the these chroma flows, they really are lovely. And because they're so highly pigmented and 
kind of translucent so as I'm moving this I'm revealing again that texture that was underneath. So that's quite fun. Now I can come back once this has dried a little bit more and just add some extra colour around these edges I think. Or I'm going to fill that with texture and pattern. But and you can see the difference this has made, can't you? So here I'm just going to add some of that blue there. I'll add the denim, not denim, the lapis blue at the top. I'm actually going to take the lapis blue into some of these sections, I think. Can't always get the lighter blue at the bottom, but you can certainly get that darker blue at the top. Okay, I've got purple on here, so we may get some purple overlap. It is what it is. It's that unexpected result. So there we are, we've got this. Actually, the documenter sink isn't moving, so I think it was a different pen I used on the other one that was moving with this. I was using a Unisigno DX.38, very fine one. That's nice because then on the other side, I can use different colours. So here I'm going to put the violet at the top on this one. And then I'll put some of the orchid pink in this section here and here. I think I might put it in that one as well, because that would make some sense to me. Maybe a little bit of purple from the tortillon coming off. It gives that lovely change in colour, so they, there's that difference in colour from one to the next, which is really quite nice. Um, here, can't tell the difference here, so I'm just going to go up and add that there, add that one, but I'm going to add some paler blue on this one because I think that's what I'd need here, just to add the colour. Like so. So it does take a wee while to do, but it's a nice way to spend time and I'm not in a rush to get this done so I'm not going to finish this in the video and it may take me a while to get all of this done full stop but um, I'm just going to do another section here because I, I'm going to start adding patterns and so on to these so I've got that I would like the violet here and I would like this violet to fade then into the pink And perhaps that light blue to go into the violet blue. And then we'll have that place in the middle that is just... That's not a good end. Some of the ends haven't got rid of the fluffy bit. Okay, so... The other thing about using blending fluid is that don't have to be overly neat to recolouring or fussy with it because you, you do that smoothing and blending with this, with the, the tortillon and the gamsol. I'm actually really glad I've discovered now that the documenter sink actually doesn't shift with this, so that's made me quite happy. So it's starting to add that kind of volume to this. So this is looking more very angular. I think you might agree with me when I say that. It really does look a lot more angular than when we started, for sure. So this is the um, orchid going on. And I'm just going to add some of the ultra pink at the bottom, so we've got a change there. And I'm, I'm going to add the light blue at the top. Again, maybe that I want to come back afterwards and add some more shading where these um, spaces 
these areas um, touch one another, but I can do that at a later date. There we go. And with that one, you can definitely see the texture showing through, can't you? You can. So that's a really lovely surprise, you know, and it makes me happier that I don't have to put so much pencil down because the reason I don't use coloured pencils generally is because they really hurt my um, wrist and, and fingers and so on. I, you know, I'm, I'm arthritic -y a bit and um, I don't have to use so much pressure so I can just gently stroke these along and all's well in the world, you know. So I'm going to put some violet blue here just to change this colour in between these two areas just a bit. Now I've got a sneaky suspicion that teal might actually work on this, on the, some of these colours. It wouldn't work on the pink but it certainly would work on the blues and purpley bits. So I may test that out in a little area on the edge where it might not be so noticeable and see what I like. Don't have a teal colour out. I think it would work quite nicely. Well, that's quite nice because it really does separate those sections and so on. Okay, let's go hunting. Should be able to spot one quite quickly and easily. Okay, she says. No, I don't want to. You know, turquoise green is too light. Eucalyptus is actually a tealish. Oh, there's a better colour. They're actually called teal. There we go. How excellent is that? And somewhere here. Oh, I'm going to reach for my pencil sharpener because this hasn't been sharpened yet. And I want the sharp point so I can direct my pencil. So let's have a look in, I'm going to be brave and I'm going to put some in this area. So I think the teal could work really nicely. It's not a colour that I use, well, I did use peacock feathers in this if I remember rightly and peacock feathers is a kind of tealy colour. So it would work but I need another tortillon or paper stamp or some such item. I've got one here that is still got that fluffy bit on the end. Oh, we'll work it, it'll be fine. Got it, got some of the gamsol. It actually dried, evaporated because I put the lid back on. So that's the blue going down. I'm working my way up into that teal colour now. So that's a nice, actually that's a really nice addition to this. It adds that extra, um, extra colour, extra interest. So I'm going to look now where I can add some more teal. I'm going to try teal as well on some of these sections where it's more bluey purple. I know that bottom bit there was pinky. Hang on, sorry. I'm out of shot. But let's have a look and see how this works here. It actually blends really nicely with the purple. So that's another variation I can make use of. And I can even put some violet at the top and blend it down, perhaps. And in. Right, where's my violet? Like so. So that makes that quite interesting. Yeah, I'm glad I thought of that. Again, I'm going to add teal on this side. Up around this, perhaps. Yeah, I've got teal down here, teal meeting teal, but I can always do something about that if I wish. And then I'll use that lovely light blue. And then on the other side, I'll use lapis. It's a darker colour again. Be 
because I'm not digging the pencils into the paper, I'm not getting marks afterwards when I um, when I blend this out, so I'm not marking the paper as such. I'm just leaving a very thin layer of the coloured pencil on the surface of the paper. worked quite nicely. Because this one here is dried, or mostly dried, it hasn't actually, but you know, hey-ho, I've added some violet here and I'm just going to blend that down into the teal. And again, it gives a slightly different colour there, which is really quite nice. So you can see how this works and it works really well. Let me zoom out. Let me have a What's happened here? My screensaver came on, so I couldn't see my screen. The screen's gone all black. Oh, screensaver time. So, when that happens, it tells me I haven't moved my mouse for 30 minutes. So, we're just over 30 minutes in the video. So, this is the start of the process, and you can see I'm picking things out. This is lovely over here. These colours are gorgeous. They all are. This is quite dark, but I'm happy with that because it gives me the opportunity then to add other shapes or patterns over it. Um, I can work with black on this, or I can work with white or gold. Gold's always tempting. I don't know where my gold, my ordinary gold pens are. Two ticks, let me have a look and see if I can find them. Um, no, I don't know where they are. Put them somewhere safe, typically. I always put things safe and I can never find them. Nope. So I'll just go with, um, I'll just use my, I'm going to use the Signos. See this Signo, which is lovely and big, because I'm going to add to some of these, because I said I was going to keep these. Let me just wipe that, oh, back of the hand again, get it working, clean it up. I'm going to add dots of this here, bring out this lighter area as a space where there's perhaps some highlight. I'll just scatter an odd dot here and there just to take that out and perhaps a little bit more of the white here. There we go. That needs to be gold, as does that one. So let me have a look. Um, and that one needs to be gold. So I think what I'll do here... lines of dots in, but kind of radiate from this central place towards the edge. And if I miss and I go on the black, I can always draw over it afterwards. So that makes me quite happy. I'm going to make some of these just that little bit bigger so they extend up towards the line there. So that looks a bit... Um, anemone-ish, doesn't it? Okay, so where else? Did I do that one? It's so hard for me to tell which I've added colour pencil to now in some places. I definitely have done that one. Okay. Um, this one I did yesterday, but I am absolutely desperate to actually make these white lines thicker and more visible because they really weren't. And it's bugging me. So I must probably be using this Signo DX a lot for white highlights. Um, the ink seems to be much brighter and it's a, a one millimeter, well, yeah, it's a one millimeter ball pen, which gives, it doesn't give a one millimeter thick line. And these here 
I'm just going to fill them in with the white. I should I find my white Poscas? I've put them somewhere safe and I don't know where safe is. I will find them one day. There, so that looks, that's quite nice. And did I add white like that anywhere else? I don't think so. Okay, um, I am going to get my my fine Twisby, my extra fine Twisby out, so that I can then add some patterns to some of these areas I've added coloured pencil to. And I think here I'm going to do just some stripes like this. And if I zoom in, you'll be able to see, won't you? There we go. And this won't damage my nib at all, even though I've got coloured pencil here and the gamsol, the ink flows nicely over it. I think if I was using ordinary fountain pen ink, it may not, because that's water-based, but this one isn't water-based entirely anyway, because it's waterproof. So that actually works nicely. You can see I can draw on them. And of course I can add um, all kinds of patterns to these. So here, I'm tempted not to, I want to add pattern here because of that orangey stuff I put there, but I think I'm going to do this as little black boxes. So I may not entirely use, or I may not use many Zentangled patterns to fill this in, and I'm not going to fill every section in, that's for sure. I'm going to pick out areas where I would like pattern to be and areas where it's just kind of, well, yeah, it's the background. It's more of a background than it is a foreground thing. But this really does help to frame this bit here. You can see there where I've put some white white gel ink down there, I've just gone over it and got rid of it just to tidy this up and I may just change the shape here so that those dots are fairly equidistant now and that can be altered there as well. There's no harm with doing that either. This bit down here I really do want to put some patterns in here so I'm going to do something that's a bit like tipple the tangle pattern tipple but instead of using circles I'm using kind of rounded more rounded pebbly shapes or square and rectangular shapes just for a bit of variation because who says that tipples always have to be circular you could turn them into little triangles, I suppose, or triangular shapes. Oh, there's one that was almost triangular. That one definitely is. Whatever goes together. A bit like crazy paving or um, stained glass or a mosaic made out of shattered pieces of pottery. That kind of thing. But because I'm introducing a lot more ink here, then that goes even further towards the background and these lift up. And because these are on the top, I've added the colour to them. The only thing I want to do to these now is I am going to add three dots, a larger one in the middle and smaller ones to either side to give that highlight in the centre of these sections. If the section's too small for that, I'll just put one dot in. Tiny ones there. And again, lighter the touch, the smaller the dot you get. So even though this is quite a thick nib, and that's just brightened that up now, the highlights, that little bit. So we've got that kind of volume going on. So the other thing I was going to do, and I'm going to do it quickly, is I do have here, I'm not going to use a, um, what do you call it? 
um, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? A nib pen, you know, um, one of the pen, you know, a nib pen, yeah, a nib drawing pen. I'm going to use the squirting noise you can hear is because I don't have a jar of water to hand and I need to wet my brush. But I have got some gold calligraphy in it, so I'm just shaking it up. You always have to shake ink up. And this is Windsor and Newton calligraphy ink and it's um, gold. Yeah. So I'm going to use this because you can use it in dip pens, you can use it with brushes, you must probably silicon tools, but don't ever put it into a fountain pen because they're not meant it's not ink meant for fountain pens. So I've put my gold there, I want a gold there. Yeah, definitely want some gold there. I said I was going to pop some gold in this one. And I'm tempted to put gold in that big one there. Shall I? Why not? I'm going to be cautious in my use of gold or careful in my use of gold. That one needs some because it just feels that that's what this area is doing. It's that gold that needs to go there. I'll be cautious in how much gold I do use. I'm just squirting water on my brush so I can just clean it off. It's great how you can do that. Kitchen towel underneath, so uh, my desk is getting a bit damp, but it's fine, it's only water. There, so I'll just put the lid back on that. Pop that to one side, move the spray bottle out of the light, and then I'll show you the results of the gold. And you can see it captures the light nicely. It's not quite dry yet, it takes a little while because I put a lot on. And if I zoom out, that may be that you will see it even better. There we go, really gold. And I'm quite pleased with that. So, I'm going to leave the video here for today. Look at that, I've even managed to take the white gel pen off the back of my hand. I'm going to leave that here for the video today. When I finish this, I will post a picture of it in the community section and I'll put a link to the community section in my description. I need to do that for every video actually. So you can come and chat and see things and I sometimes put work there that I'm doing that I haven't got a video for. So you can see other things that I do and find them. So all I'm going to say is thank you so much for joining me, for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's given you some ideas of how you can add colour for shading to your work, whether it's this style of work, Zentangle style, whatever it may be. And I look forward to hopefully you showing me your work on social media. Um, Facebook, Instagram is the best. I rarely bother with Twitter these days and I haven't found an alternative for it yet. I never got Twitter anyway, so I don't think I'll miss it if I delete it, to be honest. People might miss me on there, but I, I rarely post these days because it's just random whether you get to see anybody else's posts that you know. Um, I'm, I'm moaning. I'm moaning. Yes, I know. Um, so thank you so much for joining me. Please look after yourselves and find time to be creative and I'll see you soon. Who knows, maybe tomorrow. I think I'm procrastinating about doing the work for the new book, but today is one of those days where I've got lots of errands to run. So I'm going to go and get this video sorted and uploaded for later today. So thank you very much. Bye bye for now. Ta-ra.